Thank you, Diego. Uh, I ask them to uh, keep the lights on uh, because I don't want anyone to fall asleep. It's at the end of the day. So uh, uh, if you fall asleep, I'm going to see you and uh, try to wake you up. So um, I'm going to beg you, beg you to not call MSCs stem cells. So that's the theme of this lecture. So uh, one year ago, uh, I came to Chile. And then, of course, uh, my good friend uh, Jose Arias and his uh, small son, uh, Ignacio, um, were, were uh, hosting me for a lecture. And of course, uh, I, I took the subway myself to the cathedral and uh, saw the real people uh, who travel uh, in, in um, Santiago. Um, and, and of course, my good friends uh, made sure that I saw the most important product of Chile, which is uh, the fabulous wines. So uh, th this is uh, the collage of my last trip to Chile. So this is my uh, disclosure. Uh, again, I started Osiris Therapeutics, and I'm a paid consultant for lipogens. You'll see why. So I, I always like to be uh, provocative. So there's two issues. One is women have monthly bleeds and never get sepsis. So the question is why. And I'm going to take. I'm going to make sure everyone's awake. If I tell you that. If you guillotine off this piece of my finger, can I regenerate this? So all those who think I can regenerate it, raise your hands. This is zero. This is a significant number. So I want you to know that all of you, without exception, are completely wrong. Not a little bit wrong, completely wrong. And I'll show you why that's true. So this is uh, Yellowstone National Forest in the United States. In 1988, a devastating forest fire. One year later, already on the floor of the forest, flowers. Today, you could not tell there was a huge fire in this forest. So you would say that the forest has the innate capabilities to regenerate itself. And that's the theme of everything I'm going to talk about, how to manage your innate uh, capacity to regenerate. So this is Kobe Bryant. Kobe Bryant's a basketball player. He retired. Kobe Bryant's had stem cell treatments, PRP treatments. Um, Kobe Bryant um, is number four or five in the total number of minutes played in the NBA. And he's an old man at 34, 35, old man. Now, where's the surprise that this superbly conditioned athlete is going to injure soft tissue? So uh, I'll explain that um, to you a little bit later. But uh, I, I diagrammed the injury of uh, tissues. And what you see is uh, an acute inflammatory response. Every time I try to interfere with the acute inflammatory response, uh, I ruined the biology of the system. So I learned long ago, keep my hands off the inflammatory response. What every tissue, every single tissue of your body does, it tries to regenerate. But what we've done as animals is we've evolved a, a quick fix. The quick fix is to make scar tissue. So if you have uh, all the surgeons make use of scar tissue. You take a tissue and you cut it, and you put it back together. The fastest way to make this go back together is you put a stitch through it, and you get scar tissue. So we've evolved. You, you go into battle. You get a wound on your arm. You lick your wound. You go into the forest. The wound heals, and you come back to fight another day. So what we want to do is we want to inhibit completely scar formation and only have regeneration. That would be the optimal situation. And what I'm going to tell you 
is that cells can provide the information to both enhance regeneration and completely inhibit scar formation. And of course, I'm going to tell you that the MSC does this. And that's how it functions. So every second, every single second, 15 million blood cells drop dead in your body and are perfectly replaced. So while I, I say that sentence, two, three hundred million cells just drop dead in your body, were perfectly replaced. I, I, no one clapped. No one said, I'm Superman. <laughs> he clapped because he likes to regenerate. That's clear. Uh, but, but the reason for that regeneration is one thing, is, is in your bone marrow you have the hemopoietic stem cell that gives rise to all of those blood cells. And they automatically regenerate depending on the microenvironment in the blood. If you, if you give a pint of blood for a cousin who's having an operation, automatically in your bone marrow, the HMSC, HSC, the hemopoietic stem cell, divides like crazy and makes new blood cells. So it sees what's in your blood and responds. There's another cell in bone marrow, uh, which I call a mesenchymal stem cell. And, and in 1988, I, I drew this diagram. And, and you have to understand that in 1988, this diagram by all my esteemed colleagues in the audience, they said this is complete baloney. That's, they weren't polite enough to use the word baloney. But uh, they said this is completely wrong because it's well known. So whenever you hear the word well known, that means the dogma is that there's only one stem cell in adults, and that's the hemopoietic stem cell. So uh, we were taught in medical school when you're born, you have a certain number of cardiac myocytes. They get bigger or smaller, but they don't increase in number. That's completely wrong. What's now known is that, as I said previously, every single tissue of your body has its own stem cell, and that stem cell divides and makes new cells, whether it's your liver, your kidney, etc. So uh, what I propose is that this MSC could make bone, cartilage, te uh, muscle, tendon, ligament, fat, etc. So the, 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 the next 20, 30 years, we publish papers on all of those. And so in vitro, we can get all of that. And that's what you need for tissue engineering. But these lineage pathways are tricky. You can't just as we thought we could, throw a molecule on MSCs and they'll become cartilage. Yes, they'll become cartilage, but not uh, knee cartilage versus ear cartilage. The inductive molecules are different. And so managing pathways is what you have to do, lineage pathways is what you have to do in tissue engineering. Now, I'm not going to discuss that further. I'm going to discuss regenerative medicine the MSC at the top of the top of the chart. I, I want to say that for this pathway, the tissue engineering of cartilage, we've just been funded to produce a resource center where we develop technologies to optimize tissue engineered cartilage. And the unique technologies that we've invented is to interrogate tissue-engineered cartilage without sacrificing the sample. So we used to make 20 samples and every day take one and destroy it and analyze it. Now we need one sample and outside the chamber we can analyze it. So the this is a resource center to share this technology with whoever um, 
is also working on that. So that, that's a new accomplishment. So I'm going to talk about this, uh, the top part of the chart, the regenerative medicine. So what, what we've learned how to do is to isolate MSCs, expand them in culture, and, and get them to form these mesenchymal tissues. And, and so I can make cells dance wonderfully on a Petri dish. I can make them become cartilage or bone or tendon or fat. Not, not a big uh, market for fat. But uh, the, what's missing here is that's what happens on a Petri dish. What happens in vivo is not what we see on a Petri dish. Although I, I was romanced by this observation for, for many, many years. So it turns out that for every tissue of your body, every single tissue, I can isolate MSCs, I can put them on a Petri dish, I can get them to divide, and, and if you get um, MSCs from bone or you get MSCs from muscle, the culture medium has to be optimized. You can't use the same culture medium for marrow MSCs as you use for muscle MSCs. They have different chemistries. They're MSCs. They, they, they make uh, bone and fat and cartilage on a Petri dish. But if you want to optimize them for these pathways, you need to optimize the medium. So the medium for fat-derived MSCs and the medium for marrow-derived MSCs are very different, very different. So again, uh, if you follow all of the uh, techniques in my paper and you work on gingival fibroblasts, MSCs, you don't have the optimal medium if you use the marrow medium. So again, these must be optimized. What's missing from this diagram is the fact that all of those tissues where you can get MSCs, and I have to say, you know, I work on bone marrow, and so bone marrow is this incredible tissue to work on. And I can't think of anything more disgusting than to think that you could get an MSC from fat. It's, it's, quite, it's quite upsetting to me. But what was missing from the slide is the fact that all these tissues have blood vessels. And w when I realized that, I realized that MSCs are derived from perivascular cells, from pericytes. So this is a blood vessel in heart, and my good friend Bruno Pio colored them red. And these are, the, you could see those fingers around the blood vessel. This cell is characterized by the fact that it has smooth muscle actin and myosin in it. It contracts or it relaxes. So uh, Diego Correa's blood, uh, blood pressure medication, this is the cell that's reacting, not the, not the endothelial cells. So every cell you see, Every single cell you see on the outside of the blood vessel is a pericyte. Every one you see is a pericyte. Every one you see is a pericyte. Every one you see is a pericyte. I'm very clever. I didn't tell you which tissues these were, right? Every tissue, every single tissue, without exception, the blood vessels have mesenchymal cells on their external surfaces. So that makes sense. If, if, if this, oh, sorry, what did I do? Um, if if uh, this is a blood vessel and this is a pericyte, uh, this cell is in contact with the tissue that they're embedded in. So if this is liver or this is fat, they see a different microenvironment. And so therefore the cells have different chemistries. Makes sense. So if you break that blood vessel, and I always ask the audience to look at me, you, blood vessel, pericyte, blood vessel breaks, pericyte differentiates into an MSC, and from the front of the MSC, 
it makes a curtain of molecules that stop your immune system from surveying, interrogating the injured tissue. This is your first line of defense against autoimmune reactions from establishing. So if you have an autoimmune disease, maybe the pericyte's the problem. From the back of the pericyte MSC, from the back of the pericyte MSC, they make molecules which help the tissue to really regenerate, not, not repair, not scar. And one of the strong and important things here is that uh, the molecules that are involved inhibit scar formation. So that diagram I showed you at the beginning, the yellow triangle is inhibited. The regeneration is enhanced. So this is a, a paper from uh, Lindolfo Morales, who's in Brazil, a brilliant paper where he takes the transcriptome and he shows that pericytes, specific pericytes give rise to MSCs by comparing the transcriptome of the two cells. So it's a very interesting, very well done paper. Uh, Lindalfo, uh, a brilliant young scientist uh, from Brazil. So this is a paper uh, that emphasizes what I've just said, which is if you take a marrow MSC, um, a, a menangial cell, which is uh, like an MSC but uh, different, uh, 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 MSC from uh, liver, uh, pericyte from a large blood vessel, or uh, a fat-derived MSC, and you look at their transcriptomes, what you see is they all make unique molecules which are unique to that phenotype, but they have some molecules which overlap. So all MSCs are MSCs, but all MSCs are, are, have different chemistries. That's what I told you from the beginning. So this proves that the MSCs have molecules in common and molecules which are unique to the tissue that you get them from. So um, the other piece which is completely ignored by uh, people who work with MSCs is that the MSCs are incredibly sensitive cells. They sense the microenvironment that they sit, and then they have a response to that. And, and this is a brilliant paper uh, which shows that the same MSC, same MSC, depending on the microenvironment that you find it, can be anti-inflammatory or pro-inflammatory. Same cell sees one microenvironment, responds one way, sees another microenvironment, responds another way. This is true for MSCs from marrow, MSCs from fat, MSCs from liver. The same is true. Different molecules uh, cause pro-inflammatory uh, as well as an anti-inflammatory activity. So, so everything I just discussed uh, has nothing to do with stem cells. There's no stem in the MSC. And that's the important aspect. And so uh, a few years ago, I, I renamed the MSC as a medicinal signaling cell because it's a drugstore for sites of injury. It makes drugs depending on the site it sees. So if you have a stroke or you have a heart attack or you have kidney failure, Different microenvironments, different response profile. So MSCs um, dock. If you put them intravenously, they go to sites of broken blood vessels. That's where they do business. They, they uh, have an immunoregulatory and trophic uh, capabilities. But what they're doing is managing the innate regenerative capabilities of the host. So MSCs for heart attack don't make cardiac myocytes. Do not. MSCs in stroke do not make neurons. They make molecules that allow the neural stem cell 
or cardiac stem cells to function in, in that capacity. So if you go to this website, clinicaltrials.gov, 644 clinical trials are in play if you put the mesenchymal stem cells in that uh, website. And uh, in uh, North America, um, there's uh, 119 clinical trials in play, and the, the most active states are the ones in red. They're, they're not Republican or Democrat here. They're, they're the most clinical trials, which is the most important thing to me at the moment. Uh, this is South America. It's clear that uh, Chile uh, has a few clinical trials on this website. Uh, clearly, uh, Brazil has a few more. So um, get to work, guys. Um, these are all the clinical symptoms that I copy-pasted from all of those clinical trials that are on that website. Uh, because there's so many old people here, uh, I put, put it in bigger print so you can see them. Um, Crohn's disease, um, graft-versus-host disease, MS, ALS, kidney transplant. So fabulous paper that I talked about earlier from Dr. Tan, T-A-N, from China, 159 uh, kidney transplants and they used MSCs as chaperones instead of immunosuppression for these transplants. And, but the genius of that was uh, after the microsurgery to connect the kidneys, um, you released a tourniquet and perfused the newly attached kidney, and at that point they gave the first aliquot of uh, autologous, marrow-derived, culture-expanded MSCs uh, to, to help with that uh, s surgery. And two weeks later, for all the things, other things that were wrong, uh, another aliquot of MSCs. Um, no infections, uh, no rejections, and perfect kidney function from just the kidneys that have seen MSCs. So do MSCs differentiate into kidney cells? Absolutely not. Do they act as chaperones for this transplantation, for sure. So uh, uh, unexpected, completely unexpected aspect of this is uh, what I'm about to discuss. This is Tracy Bonfield, a um, uh, brilliant young colleague across the street in the Children's Hospital. And in this hospital, they're very famous for treating kids with cystic fibrosis. So cystic fibrosis is, is a gene defect in uh, a chloride and sodium uh, transmembrane conductance regulator. And what happens is that the lungs, the GI tract, all of the organs fill up with mucus because of this ion uh, transport problem. So uh, when you disrupt uh, uh, particularly the transport of sodium, in, in this regard, you, you get all this mucus. So What's a disaster for these kids are pseudomonas infections of lungs are, are because we don't know how to deal very well with pseudomonas in a pediatric context. And so uh, what uh, the, uh, the colleagues of Tracy Bonfield did, took a mouse, took this transmembrane conductance regulator out of the mouse, so they call it a cystic fibrosis knockout mouse. So we take an agarose bead, we put a, a fixed number of pseudomonas particles in the bead, and we put it directly into the lung. And in a wild-type animal, you get a full lung infection, but by one week, the animal takes care of it. In the cystic fibrosis knockout mouse, within seven days, every animal that gets pseudomonas dead, completely dead. They can't handle this lung infection. If on day two of that infection, we take some of Diego's marrow-derived culture-expanded MSCs and we give them to these mice and we give it to them retroorbitally, we, we, we open up the eye and we squirt them in the back because we know they quantitatively dump into the lungs. 
So these animals walk away. So we spend six months working on how the immune system is affected by the MSCs. So uh, we'll get a couple papers out of it, but it's the wrong answer. In this case, it's a molecule called LL37, which is made by the MSC when it sees a bacteria, which kills Pseudomonas on contact. And not only that, but LL37 um, brings in a macrophage to get the carcasses out of there so there's no endotoxin effect. You're all making because you're hungry to go home for dinner. Maybe, maybe not the Chileans. Uh, it's not 10 o'clock yet. So um, the, you're all making LL37s in your mouth. They're called defensins. They've been studied for 30 years by dentists and uh, people interested in the oral cavity. Um, it's how you control the bacteria that go to your GI tract. So the MSC has it in their genome. They bump into a bacteria, and they kill the bacteria on contact because of that molecule. So why do women not get sepsis? Because they make LL37. Any bacteria that comes in is it's sensed by the MSCs, broken blood vessels, monthly bleeds. This is a, a, a copy of an a Indian newspaper where for a few rupees they'll collect uh, menstrual flow, isolate the MSCs, freeze them down for emergency use. So just so you don't think I'm just being gross, uh, these are papers that are published to show that uh, menstrual MSCs are the same as marrow MSCs, the same as fat MSCs. They function the same. They're multipotent in vitro. We, we know how to make cells dance, remember? So uh, uh, this is another source, a broken blood vessel, another source of MSCs. So MSCs uh, dock at sites of broken or inflamed blood vessels. They have an immunomodulatory and a, a trophic component. And what they're doing is managing the body's own capacity to re regenerate tissue. So there's 20 or 30 companies that make MSCs of one kind or another. I'm going to quickly, because there's so much interest in fat here, I, I'm going to focus on, on uh, this company that I'm a consultant for. It's called Lipogens. And this is the inventor, uh, Carlo Tremolata, a plastic surgeon in Milan, has a fabulous plastic surgeon clinic, does fat transfers all the time, and wanted a better way more reproducible way to do fat transfers. So he invented this apparatus. The apparatus is made up of a, 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 a cylinder that's filled with saline. And you put the liposuction uh, in, into the cylinder. And, and uh, I know he's an Italian and he's a plastic surgeon, but this guy's a genius. He, he, he designed the entrance to have wires that are a certain distance apart, so they further disperse the liposuction into smaller units. And then uh, the other part of this is that there's stainless steel balls that are inside the chamber, a Fibonacci number of balls, because he's Italian and they believe in that kind of stuff. And then what you do is when you have the liposuction in there, you, you do a martini. You shake this, OK? And you shake it for about. Uh, 15 to 30 seconds, and you do it in a systematic manner, like you're making the best martini in town. And then what you do is you open up the stopcock and let new saline come in. And that saline um, uh, 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 washes out all the broken cells, all of the, the uh, oil that's dispersed, and cleans up the whole preparation. And the other genius part of this rig is the exit port is made up of 500 micron holes. So anything smaller than 500 microns goes into the waste bag. All of the uh, adipocytes and other uh, cells uh, uh, line up at the back end of the apparatus, and, and then you turn the stopcock, and in a 1cc syringe, you collect 
500 micron balls of live adipocytes, and inside are MSCs. So if you put that into an osteoarthritic joint, these MSCs don't come out for four or five days. So the acute inflammatory response has washed through that joint, has stopped, and now you, you have a slow release vehicle for MSCs. This is what the balls look like in a scanning EM. Uh, when, when you put these balls in tissue culture, they have fat in them, so they never go to the bottom of the Petri dish. The only thing that you see four or five days later are MSCs that come to the bottom of the Petri dish and divide. So that's how we know that, that eventually they come out. And, and I, I think I can tell on MSC when I see one. I've seen a few in my life. So uh, there's other companies. Mesoblast is the big elephant in the room. It's a billion dollar uh, uh, market cap. And, and they have several um, trials. You, you can go, to, I, again, all of this is public information. It's on their website. You can, you can go look at it. Uh, this is a rheumatoid arthritis uh, phase two trial. Um, and and the, the data is spectacular because what you see is that 71% um, uh, of the patients have uh, incredible RA scores that have been reduced by exposure to MSCs. And also the medication that they're taking goes down. Um, by, by week 12, you can already see the response profile of the patients above placebo. Uh, fabulous data. This is um, uh, one of the early OSIRIS um, studies in, in which um, you, you see that uh, the, the lowest dose group actually um, provides a larger, these are people who've had uh, meniscal tears, and what you see by MRI is that 24% of the patients above background, um, the meniscus gets bigger. The meniscus is repairing itself. So, so again, um, hugely interesting. And the, and the trial, which is now most interesting, is uh, uh, marrow-derived, culture-expanded, aloe MSCs. These are all aloe MSCs. Uh, uh, people who have low back pain or have disc problems. They squirt a few million cells on that disc. And uh, what you see, this is the 12-month data I was too lazy to put the 24-month data as available. And what you see is uh, no surgeries, reduced pain. We know that MSCs make molecules that sit on opioid receptors. They don't make opioids. They make pseudomolecules that sit on opioid receptors. So the patient has the perception that their pain has gone away. Uh, for me, uh, works for me, certainly better than taking opioids. So, uh, but, but go to the website and look at the 24-month data. These are all their clinical trials that are now in play. And the important thing about these clinical trials is that they, they have two components to them. They have an immunomodulatory component and a regenerative component, whether it's in heart, whether it's diabetes, or whether it's rheumatoid arthritis, uh, those are the key aspects of this. So I say that MSCs are drug stores for sites of injury, and, and they're a, a multi-drug, slow-release vehicle uh, that senses the microenvironment and, and reacts. So again, the mechanism is broken blood vessel, pericyte comes off, MSC differentiates, MSC gets activated by the microenvironment, from their front, they make immunomodulatory molecules, and from the back, uh, trophic molecules. So we know, we know how the MSCs are anchored to the blood vessel basement membrane. So that there's a, a blood vessel, a basement membrane, and then the MSCs anchored in the basement membrane. The molecule that anchors them is PDGFBB. Interesting molecule, boring molecule, but pretty interesting because it's the anchorage molecule. Uh, when, when orthopedic surgeons use PRP, 
That's PDGFBB. So you release the MSCs from blood vessels and you activate them with these molecules. That's what PRP does. We, we know how to get the same cell to become an osteoblast, but it's their trophic and medicinal capabilities which are the most interesting. So this is the original hypothesis slide. I, I, I made a mistake. I didn't think through what do these cells really do in vivo. They're pericytes. And, and that's an important piece to this because they're not stromal cells. So if you think pericytes, you'll, you'll, you'll have a completely different logic for how these cells work. So again, I, I beg you, keep using MSCs because of my delicate uh, ego, but these are not stem cells. They're medicinal signaling cells. So um, management of patients and their innate regenerative resources is what doctors do anyway. So the MSCs help. And, and so I, I, I want to show you why you were all wrong. Everybody knows, all the biologists know this slide. If you take a newt and you cut their arm off, within a few weeks, the arm completely regenerates. So if you cut the arm off here, or you cut it off here, or you cut it off here, it doesn't matter. The, the animal knows its positional information and regenerates a complete limb. So you would say, if I cut off my fingertip, too bad, Arnold. I'm going to tell you that we're as good as any newt that I ever met. So the way we do this experiment is we cut off the newt limb, we wave the newt in the air for a minute or two to make a clot, to make a clot. And then we throw this newt in the filthy pond water with huge numbers of bacteria. Never gets infected. And underneath the clot, so when the men here cut themselves shaving, they get a clot. Underneath the clot, the epithelial cells grow in and kick the clot off. That epithelium is regenerative epithelium. The underneath, guess who's sitting there? They're called MSCs. It's called a repair blastema. Happens in newt, happens in my fingertip. The key Kaplan rule is when you cut off your fingertip, don't go to the emergency room because some resident's going to throw a stitch through that to stop it bleeding. Scar tissue. I'll give you a money back written guarantee. You put a stitch in anything, it's scar tissue. You put a compressive bandage in, what do you get? You get a clot. You get a clot like the newt, like holding the newt up in the air. You get a clot. So this is my good friend, Steve Badalak, who's at the University of Pittsburgh. Steve Badalak takes the extracellular matrix from pig bladder, disgusting, I can't think of anything worse, pig bladder, takes the cells, throws them away. You have a, a type 1 collagen extracellular matrix so many growth factors in there. He morselizes it in a guillotine. He has a mouse model, rat model. He guillotines off the digits, puts his magic fairy dust on, and they regenerate all of the digits. This is a guy who he sprinkled fairy dust on, and that's the sequence of regeneration of that finger including the nail and the first joint. So is this guy better than me? Absolutely not. So if you think I'm crazy, and this is some advertisement for Steve Badalak and for fairy dust, go, take out your phones, go to Google, and Google fingertip regeneration pictures. Fingertip regeneration pictures. Fingertip, all these people have regenerated fingertips. What's the key? Nobody put a stitch through it. Nobody put a stitch through it. No scar tissue. 
a clot. So again, Badalac says there's something associated with the extracellular matrix that stimulates regeneration. That material brings MSCs, as he's now shown, from perivascular locations along the digit to aggregate at the cut surface, called the blastema. And that's the start of the regeneration process. So, so this is uh, Rodrigo Somoza with, with Diego Correa. We, we, we did this poster. And that's the website. You should uh, go to that website and download that poster. It has all of the latest information um, uh, on, on MSCs. And, and the key is what I told you before. Every tissue has its own stem cell. Sitting next to that stem cell is a pericyte MSC, and both the stem cell and the pericyte are in contact with the endothelial cell. That's called the stem cell niche. Neural stem cell, cardiac stem cell, liver stem cell, identical. This is bone marrow, the active hemopoietic stem cell sitting next to an MSC. These guys are sending progenitors into the bloodstream. Here's a quiescent hemopoietic stem cell next to a, 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 a pericyte MSC. The signature of this guy and the signature of this guy, molecular signatures, are different. They're sitting next to different cells. They make different molecules. It makes complete sense. We can separate, we can sort those two different cells. And, and what every physician in the audience has been taught is that the blood vessels are hooked up to the sympathetic nervous system. Wrong, completely wrong. The sympathetic neurons innervate the pericyte MSC, that's the only cell that can contract, not the endothelial cell on the blood vessel. So, so again, these cells pay, play absolutely crucial roles. And what Diego talked about, or you're going to talk about, he's going to talk about tomorrow, so I'm not going to steal his story, except to tell you that on this poster, he's shown how the MSC pericytes, remember I showed you all those pericytes on those blood vessels. How does a metastasizing cell get past all those MSCs? Well, the oncologist will tell you that melanoma gets into bone by eating its way into bone. It digests away the, the tissue in front of it. That's wrong. That's wrong. The MSC pericyte sticks its fingers through the fenestrated blood vessels, grabs the melanoma cell, and pulls it into the stroma of the bone. It's completely different than eating your way. Diego's going to tell you what molecules are involved and how we deduce those are the molecules that are involved. So again, in breast cancer, in prostate cancer, in melanoma, that go to bone, we know some of the molecules that are key in this situation, and they're not digestive molecules. They're active molecules associated with the pericyte MSC. So, so go look at this poster. The details are all on this poster, and you can download it from that uh, website. So this is a new platform for thinking about the biology of marrow, of fat, of neural tissue, of how these cells can provide therapeutic outcomes, and how to manage the body's innate regenerative potential. Some guy in, in Valparaiso on the top of a hill gets a heart attack, Helicopter comes, brings him down to the main hospital. Ten years from now, he's going to drive to the clinic that's two blocks away. He's going to get a bag of Diego Correa cells. They're going to put it in intravenously, and that'll be the treatment. Goes to the heart, protects the heart, 
and, and, and provides all of those drugs that the damaged heart requires. That's my prediction. So uh, I love this quote. I always use it now. Winston Churchill's quote, it's the end of the beginning. Healthcare by practitioners in a variety of disciplines are going to change because we now have the ability to manipulate the body's own innate regenerative potential. Old person like me, I need a booster shot. Five-year-old breaks a leg, three weeks it's fine. I break a leg, it's a big problem. I need more MSCs at that break site. How do I get them? I, I go to Diego, I get a bag of his cells, I put them in intravenously, of course, I tingle with the thrill of having his cells inside me, but my immune system, his curtain, he's such a powerful guy, his curtain inhibits the immune system from seeing those cells. They're not privileged, they're not immunoprivileged, they're immunoevasive, very different concept. And so immunoevading allows these cells to go to sites of damage and, and to do their tricks. All of the research in my lab is supported by the American taxpayers through NIH, and it's clear there's a large number of people at the Skeletal Research Center who do all the real science. I'm clearly just the mouthpiece. Thank you very much.